Hello, everyone, and welcome to the St. Francis Prep Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us today. As our attendees roll in, I'm just going to go through a few housekeeping announcements before turning it over to our presenters. Uh, as attendees, your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists can't see or hear you. You can ask your questions using the Q&A button you see on your screen, and you can ask your questions to our presenters at any time. A reminder that this is just one of a few sessions happening today. So uh, head back to the website to sign up for some more sessions in the next few hours. And another reminder that all of our sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash SFP in a few days. Um, and without any further ado, I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from the University of Tampa. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me share my screen. All right. So here's my contact information. Um, I am one of the admissions counselors at the University of Tampa, so you can reach out to me if you have any questions moving forward about the admissions process. I'll share this at the end as well. A little bit about the university. This is an aerial view of campus. We are located in downtown Tampa, so it's a quick five minute walk right into the heart of downtown for internships and jobs um, and fun. We also are a medium sized school, so we currently have just under 10,000 students, including our graduate studies. We love to celebrate diversity with representing over 130 countries. We represent all 50 states with about 20% of those students coming from in state of Florida and 70% from the rest of the US. We like to say that we have the best of both worlds because our campus is located in a downtown area. However, we are sectioned off, so you'll never have to go through any busy roads to get to class, but you always have access to that downtown living that quick five minute walk across the bridge. We are part of the Sunshine State Conference, so if you're interested in playing on a, one of our Division II teams, you can fill out a recruitment form on our website, and that will get sent directly to the coach. Getting into the classroom, we do like to keep those class sizes small, and they will get smaller as you get further into your program, and we like to have those real good relationships between our faculty and, and students. Um, at UT, we do not utilize TAs, so all of your classes will be taught by a professor um, with their PhD or terminal degree. We offer over 200 areas of study and you will have an academic advisor to help you find your way at UT. So it's easy to add a, a, my, another minor or a major if you are looking to expand your in interests. Last year, we were ranked the best location for a college campus in Florida. So definitely come check us out if you have a moment to come on campus and do one of our in-person visits, but we also offer, offer virtual visits as well. We like to provide hands-on learning. So here are a few examples of that. We have a mock hospital on campus for our nursing students. We also have an entrepreneurship center, which is dedicated to um, our students who are looking to build their dreams and expand to um, pitch to local and domestic investors. We have a marine field station, a financial trading center, and a fabrication lab all located on campus. Um, that being said, many of our internships are within walking distance, and we do have a career service center that can help you find internships so that you're prepared for graduation as well. Um, if you're interested in studying abroad, we do offer that as well. So you can do traditional study abroad, travel courses, or our semester at sea. And we can get involved in undergraduate research right from your freshman year. Our motto is to love where you live and learn. And we do offer over 250 student organizations, including an active Greek Greek life, so there's different ways to get involved, and there really is something for everyone here at UT. Getting into the application deadlines, we do offer a few early action deadlines, so I would encourage you to meet those deadlines in order to get an early decision. Um, however, we do have regular decision as well as rolling admissions. If you are admitted, you're not required to attend. It's completely up to you um, if you're looking to commit to UT. When you go to apply, um, you will need to uh, submit your official high school transcripts, a personal essay, and a letter of recommendation. We are going test optional until spring of 2023, so if you'd like to submit them, you can, but it will not harm you in any way if you choose not to. And here's my contact information, so that way you can reach out to me if you have any questions about our specific programs. Um, we are known for our business program holding the top business accreditation. We're also known for our marine biology and environmental science due to our location and access to the bay. And um, that kind of sums it up. So I will 
have any chat, uh, any questions, feel free to put in the chat box and I'll put my contact information there as well. Great, thank you so much. Um, and next we will hear from the University of Colorado. All right, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Navarro Ivar. I'm an assistant director of admissions here at the University of Colorado Boulder, uh, located in the beautiful state of Colorado in the city of Boulder. Um, I always like to start off with a picture of the picturesque scene that you get to see um, from campus. Uh, we are constantly selected as the number one college town in the United States with an 18 to one student to faculty ratio, over eight colleges, schools, and programs, over 4,000 courses and over 150 fields of study and over 525 student organizations. So we, from just for those facts, we get, uh, you can likely tell that we are a larger institution. We have approximately 30,000 undergraduate students. Uh, we are a tier one research university as well as a division one school for athletics. Um, that being said, we do find that it is really easy to create a sense of community here on campus. The city of Boulder itself is not as overwhelming. Uh, we're only about 35 uh, minutes northwest of the city of Denver. So in terms of accessibility, um, there's also very few uni uni um, universities in the state of Colorado with as much accessibility as we do. Um, all of our majors and programs are broken down into these eight colleges and schools that you see on your screen. Uh, we have over 110 different majors, uh, over 50 plus minors, certificates and concentrations. So it would take too long to break those down. But as you can see from our screen, uh, we do group all of our majors into these groups. So the College of Arts and Sciences is by far our most popular and largest college on campus. Obviously lots of arts and science majors within there. Uh, the College of Engineering and Applied Science as well as the LEED School of Business are, are our two most popular programs on campus. They are, are also um, two of the most competitive to get into as well. Uh, we do have a top 10 aerospace engineering program uh, nationally ranked uh, in the top 20 uh, business school as well nationally ranked. Um, in addition to all of those, we also do have a school of education. If you're interested in becoming a teacher, we provide uh, a path towards elementary and secondary education certification. Uh, the College of Media, Communication and Information actually grew out of the College of Arts and Sciences because we have such robust offerings. So that includes anything from journalism, strategic communication, uh, data analytics as well. And then we also do have the College of Music, definitely uh, a smaller college on campus, typical class size 12 to 15. Um, and it's more of a conservatory type feel. So it's more classical training, uh, more personalized attention. If you're interested in contemporary music, um, then CU Boulder is probably not the, the place for you, unfortunately. But if you are interested in music of any other type, we have a wonderful program. You can also be involved with our other uh, musical um, groups on campus as well, even if you're not a, a formal music major. And then lastly, we do have the most popular program in environmental design in the country. So that includes our majors in architecture, pro, uh, product design, as well as uh, sustainable ur urban planning. Uh, we do require our students to live on campus their first year. We have um, about 15 different residence halls. So there's a lot of options in terms of how many roommates you can have, the type of bathroom that you wanna have as well. Um, but in, within that housing community, we have 12 residential academic programs, uh, which are essentially a way for you to live uh, and learn with um, a cohort of students. So you'd be going to the same classes or similar classes as them, uh, living in the same residence hall and having some additional academic support. We also have seven living and learning communities, which are pretty similar to the residential academic programs, um, except that they're more focused on social justice or activism. And then lastly, we do have 12 traditional communities as well. So if you don't wanna live uh, with the students that you go to class with, that's perfectly fine. You could have a more traditional residence hall experience. Uh, we are in the beautiful city of Boulder that affords us a lot of different opportunities for every type of program and major. Um, whether you're interested in business, there's obviously small businesses um, in Boulder as well as tech startups, Google, Microsoft offices. Um, if you're interested in uh, research, uh, we have tons of research on campus and off campus as well. And then obviously, if you're interested in recreation, we have great accessibility to everything you could possibly want. Um, Chautauqua Park, which is the, the park that, uh, the, the, uh, near the mountain range that you see in my background, is about a 15 minute walk from campus. Eldora Mountain is about 45 minutes if you're interested in skiing and snowboarding. And then we do also have plenty of other options within the city of Boulder. As you can see from my screen, we do have a little bit of everything for everyone that is part of the appeal of Boulder and that we can appeal to the creative, the researcher, the volunteer, whatever it might be. Um, I would love to break this down a little bit more specifically for you all, but we do have a limited amount of time. Um, but I do want to get to the application process a little bit. We review holistically. We do not have set minimum GPA, SAT or ACT test scores and we are test optional for this upcoming cycle. As you can see from your screen, these are all the requirements that we ask of our students, the application, essays, application fee, uh, transcript from high school, college transcripts if you've taken a dual or concurrent enrollment courses, 
Um, like I mentioned previously, we are test optional and we do require one letter of recommendation. Uh, we also suggest a, a list of activities or resume, but it's definitely not required. And we have two major deadlines for our first year students. So November 15th is our early action deadline. It is non-binding. So if you get admitted to CU Boulder, congratulations. You just have your notification a lot sooner than everyone else. Um, and if you apply by then, you will get your notification by February 1st. But you can also wait for our regular decision deadline, which is January 15th, and you'll receive your notification no later than April 1st. All right, well, thank you so much. That is just a little bit of information about the University of Colorado Boulder. If you do have any questions after today, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I am the admissions counselor for the Northeast. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to meet with you virtually or answer you over email, but I will hand it back to Matt. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. And next we will hear from Clarkson University. Hello, everybody. My name is Oscar Rodriguez. Thank you so much for being here. I represent Clarkson University. We're a small private school in upstate New York, uh, right in the town of Potsdam. Um, a beautiful campus uh, in the in about 10 minutes away from the Adirondack Mountains. Our student body is about 3,300 students. Our biggest department is um, mechanical and aeronautical department. They have about 460 students, so everything else is it's, it's fewer uh, than that. Um, we have a, a great body of professors, 270. Every department has well, a, is full of faculty, um, all of them um, ready and, 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 and happy to teach. Uh, we had a great year, all in-person classes, in-person labs. You get a lab instructor and also TAs, which are usually older students. Uh, we have a 13 to 1 prefer student to professor ratio, which is great. Uh, and we believe next year is gonna be 11 to one. We'll be talking to you about the undergraduate programs. This is uh, Jim Miller, the head of the chemistry department. A lot, some, or some of our students switch from chemistry to chemical engineering. They realize that when they get to Clarkson, they have way many options that, that, that they first expected. We have a school of liberal arts and science. Very, very strong programs. Um, many of these programs stop about 120 students. Um, some, again, have fewer, uh, but biology, chemistry, physics, and then when it comes to your liberal arts and many more history, humanities, political science, our students do really, really well. Uh, and they have many, many options for research. We have a whole business school with five different programs. All of them are accredited by the AASSB accreditation. Um, Really, really great school for business. If you're trying to just do finances, economics, they're still going to make you develop business plans and present them. If you're all, if if all you want to do is entrepreneurship, develop businesses, they're still going to um, make you do accounting, economics, make you well-rounded. And again, five programs, one business school. A lot of those students end up working for tech, tech, engineering, and science companies because they hang out with all the other engineer engineering students. So Clarkson, very known for its engineering. We have nine different programs, all accredited by ABED, the American Board of Engineering and Technology. Um, we, we get a, a, a great feedback from employers, uh, from our students, because they work great in teams. That's the first thing about Clarkson. You, you have to be willing to work in teams and, and be productive. And, and again, it's older students that are very, very smart and, and want to do well in their academics and are always looking ahead uh, for their career. Uh, again, many, many minors as well. Nine different programs you can come in as um, uni uh, university studies, or if you know you want to do engineering as engineering studies. We want to help you find your way in the right program for you. We also have environmental health science, environmental science and policy, very strong departments. They have the Institute of Sustainability of the Environment just for them. We have biomolecular science, digital arts and science. Engineering and management, half business, half engineering, you get the double accreditation. Liberal arts and business as well. Uh, amazing pre-advising programs, pre-dentistry, pre-law, pre-medicine. We have pre-occupational therapy that you can go into the master's and PhD right after. Um, Pre-physician's assistance, and we have a physician's assistance program that's very well known um, for after your four years. And again, Clarkson, we're a great school. If you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a physician's assistant, if you want to be an aeronautical engineer, that's great. We all we are also a great school to to help you find your path and, and the right track for you. I think we we put a lot of time and effort and and 
and the professors truly care about their students and when they where they end up after after they graduate. So Clarkson, we require you to do a co-op internship, research, or a study abroad. You have to do one in order to graduate. Um, at the end of the day, it becomes um, a great thing when you look for jobs and later on. But I also like to point out that it, it helps you kind of know if you fit in the field that you want to go into. So let's say if you're doing civil engineering, you can work for a civil engineering firm. You might end up not liking that switching to electrical engineering or trying to open up your own business because you want to be your own boss there. You can take some business class at our business school. Uh, again, you have to do one of this. Some students just do a co-op. Some students do two internships and research. Some students just do research and then a study abroad to a different school outside of the country. Uh, it, it all depends on how you want to do it. These are just some examples of top-notch universities uh, where we send our students to do their co-ops. Some engineering schools, business and, and science schools, they have year-long co-ops. The professors at Clarkson think that's too long. So we do a half a year co-op program where you get a 40 hour a week job. Uh, you go to a company, you're deep in there um, working with their professionals and then you come back senior year, you change your classes, you figure it out which classes you need to get that next job, that entry level job and then move up in the company. A little bit about student life. Uh, our mascot are the Golden Knights. We have many, many clubs, intramurals, Craig Lives, leadership opportunities, and, and our campus is, is very, very active uh, all around. Again, this is my information. Uh, please reach out to me. I will also add it on the chat. Um, I read your application first, and then a couple other counselors do, and then my boss signs it off on it. So again, please email me when you apply and, and send me any questions. Thank you so much. Great, thank you so much. And next we will hear from DePaul University. Hello everyone. I will apologize for my voice now. Um, it is getting better, it used to be worse. So um, let's get this started. Awesome. So hi, everyone. My name is Amanda Woolley. I'm an assistant director of admission for DePaul University. I'm also regionally located in the New York City area. So I am in your backyard. DePaul University is a, the largest Catholic school in the country, um, located in Chicago, Illinois. We are one of three Vincentian institutions also in the country. Um, the other one of the other ones is really right next door at St. John's. Our namesake is St. Vincent de Paul, a 17th century priest whose mission was helping the underserved and underrepresented communities. We are guided by an ethic of Vincentian personalism and professionalism. We compassionately uphold the dignity of all, of, all members of our diverse, multi-faith and inclusive community. Some of the core values of DePaul um, are social and environmental justice, care for society's most vulnerable, and of course, access to higher education. Like I said, we are located in Chicago, Illinois, the third largest city in the country. We actually have two campuses in Chicago. Um, we have the Lincoln Park campus, which is a more residentially styled campus. It's also where most of our residence halls are located. We do not require you to live on campus, but if you choose to, it is guaranteed. Um, there is more green space and traditionally styled academic buildings on the Lincoln Park campus. So if you are um, wanting that more traditional academic setting, Lincoln Park is for you. It's also in a more residential neighborhood of um, Chicago. So it does feel a little quieter. From this picture, you'll actually see the Fullerton stop on the Chicago L train. Um, so this is the Lincoln Park campus. And all you need to do is just hop on the red, purple, or brown lines and head down to the Loop campus. Our second campus is located in the um, heart of Chicago's downtown, um, known as the Loop. The Loop is really um, classically the city of downtown area. Um, so think of like Midtown in Manhattan. Um, this is also what we call our vertical campus, and classes are held in high-rise buildings, not your traditional academic setting. Since we do have these two separate campuses, to make things easier on our students, 
we offer what's called a U-Pass with your student tuition. It's basically a free Metro card. So if you are wanting to get from campus to campus or really anywhere on, um, in the city of Chicago by bus or by train, we've got it covered for you. The way we divide campuses is by academic unit. So if you are interested in majors like business, communication, or computing and digital media, you'll take the majority of your classes at our Loop campus. If you are more interested in majors within liberal arts, social sciences, education, science, health sciences, or our conservatory programs of music and theater, you'll be taking the majority of your classes at the Lincoln Park campus. We have over 300 academic programs, so a lot to choose from. Our most popular though currently are film and television, health sciences, and business. We actually have one of the oldest business schools in the country. Even though we are a large institution with about 16,000 undergrads, um, our average class size is 22 and 90% of our classes are less than 40. We do have 98% of our classes taught by professors or um, terminal degree um, faculty. So we have a lot of options for you and to be taught by professors. We also have a lot of combined and accelerated programs. If you're wanting to start your graduate program off a little earlier or get in the workforce a little sooner, we have a three plus three law program, early opportunity medical school, as well as some um, three plus two um, MBA and business degrees. DePaul is also on the quarter system, which is a little unique. So we have four academic quarters for the calendar year, though most students just take three of those for the academic year. Our classes start just after Labor Day and go till just before, no, just before Thanksgiving. So you have the entire month of December off um, and you'll come back in January for winter term. You can kind of see the breakdown here on this slide. Um, we are also um, in the city of Chicago, so there's a lot of career opportunities when it comes to internships and op, op, just part-time job opportunities. And also, we don't want an unpaid internship to be a hindrance, so we do have grants and different opportunities for you, so you don't have to worry about taking an unpaid internship. We are on the common application, and we are free for all students that are applying to our school. We've been test optional for over a decade, and so we do not require any testing. With your application, you will automatically be considered for merit-based scholarships, as well as um, any honors programs that you might be interested in. We have an early action deadline of November 15th. Um, the, the last year and the, hopefully this year, decisions will roll out December 15th, um, and priority deadline for music and theater December 1st. We have a lot of virtual options, so you can check us out there or hopefully maybe take, make a trip to Chicago and see us in person. My contact information is down below. Thank you again. Great. Thank you so much. And lastly, we will hear from the University of Delaware. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sarah Leininger. I am an associate director in the Office of Admissions and the representative for the five boroughs of New York City. So hello. Nice to meet you all virtually. Uh, I, of course, will give you a nice little overview of UD before we get into the admissions process. So what you're looking at here is our South Green. The university is very much the standard picture of a college campus. Uh, several acres of green space, all of our buildings are brown brick. Uh, so it does take a little bit of getting used to to find what building your class is in, uh, but it truly is kind of that picturesque campus life. Uh, in terms of where we're located, since a lot of students don't have a ton of familiarity with the state of Delaware, unless maybe you've been to the beaches. Uh, we are nicely nestled in the mid-Atlantic. So we're actually off of the Northeast Regional Amtrak line, which is a really nice benefit to our students from the New York City area. 
Uh, so you can take Amtrak to campus. If you were to drive, it's about a two and a half hour drive, give or take traffic. We're also about two and a half hours on the flip side to Washington, D.C. And then Philadelphia and Baltimore are even closer. Philly's about 45 minutes and Baltimore is roughly about an hour. Uh, the town we are in is called Newark, uh, which does take a little bit of getting used to because I think a lot of us are familiar with Newark Airport. <laughs> um, so it's a little bit of a tongue twister at first, but we're nicely and nestled right in the upper part of the state. Uh, in terms of getting around other areas of Delaware, Wilmington is the largest city in the state. That's actually where I live. And it takes about 20 minutes to get to Wilmington from the campus. Uh, other than that, you can see a little dot near the shoreline. That's about an hour and a half away. So very easy to get around. Students really like having that traditional campus uh, in a more suburban area with easy access to the things that they like and know. No. Uh, I will also add here that because Delaware is such a small state, we're a little unique in that we are mostly non-resident students. So we are a state school, uh, we're the state flagship, but with that we bring in two-thirds of our students from outside the state of Delaware, primarily from the states pictured here. Uh, so a lot of New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, uh, but we are represented by students from over 40 states and over 20 different countries. So we do bring people from all over, uh, just primarily a lot of them from the lo local two hour or so region. So this is a picture of Main Street as well. So as I was mentioning, it is really kind of that quintessential campus town. We do not have students fleeing the campus on the weekends. They do stick around and hang out on Main Street. Uh, but then of course, internships and other things, if they're happening during the school year, they can happen in Newark. They can also happen in Philly and Wilmington and then over the summer in New York City and Washington DC. So we'll get into academics for a second. The university has 18,000 students. So we are a large place, but when you break down academically, our average class size is 35 and we have 150 plus majors. So the Major Finder is a great resource for students to explore your academic interests. And we do have an undecided major called University Studies. We also have an honors college that is an addendum to our major. So it's something that you could apply for literally with a click of a button, no additional essay this year. Uh, and it really enhances your education. So highly recommend you checking that out. If you are looking for a little bit more academic challenge in your coursework. Of course, we also have our outcomes page. So this will show you all that our students do after graduation, not only the average salary, but also where do they work? What job do they have at that employer? And then if they go on to graduate school, where are they going? So if a student is a biology student and goes on to medical school, where did they go? All of that is available for you on our outcomes page. Highly recommend you check it out and see the wonderful things that they are doing. Lastly, before I get into the admissions process, we do have study abroad. We have over 100 uh, locations spanning 40 countries. So lots of opportunities in a non-pandemic year uh, for students to get outside the United States as well. So in our admissions process, we accept both the common and the coalition, no preference for which application you use. The required essays is actually just a required essay. It is the one that is in the application itself. Something that is unique to UD, but very common among state universities in the Northeast is the self-reported academic record or the self-reported transcript. You do it once and then you send it to all the different schools you're applying to. So basically a common app for your high school transcript. We are test optional. You have the option to submit it or not. I really encourage students to think about this is what enhances your application because we cannot unsee anything. So if you're ever in doubt, probably better to go without it. Uh, and then lastly, we don't require teacher recommendations. You're welcome to submit them, but all we need is a school counselor letter or a secondary school report. In terms of academics, most of our students are around the AB range in school uh, with strong test scores usually run in the 1200s. But again, uh, it definitely varies from student to student. And we do a holistic review of every applicant. Uh, so we have early action and regular decision. Both are completely non-binding. Early action will get you a decision back by the end of January. Regular decision will get you a decision by the end of March. So we do encourage early action because it gives you more time to decide where you would like to land uh, for your college years, but uh, with either one, you are not bound to attend. And this is our website for all of our statistics and more information about the application process. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to giving some advice and answering some general questions. Great, thank you so much.
as Sarah alluded to, I'm going to uh, pose a couple questions for for our panelists. I'm going to invite them all to turn their cams back on if they choose. I'm going to give each everyone about 20, 30 seconds to reply. We'll go in the same order, but just again, go through, ask some questions, get them to talk a little bit more about their advice, um, their experience, just a little bit more about their school. So we'll start with our first question. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We'll start up at the top with the University of Tampa. Um, well, I'm not sure if Shannon heard me. Um, if she did, we'll skip her for right now and come back. Um, we'll start with the University of Colorado. All right, well, thank you so much. Um, in terms of what I would, I mean, <laughs> I already forgot the question, I'm sorry. What advice would you give to someone going through the college search process? I'll repeat it for everyone's benefit. Uh, my biggest advice is always, that my default for everything is when in doubt, ask. Um, now who you ask is always also very important, but for the application process, you'll find that a lot of universities, whether they're large or small, they have slightly different, uh, slight differences in their application process, slight difference in their timelines and, and their deadlines as well. Um, so my suggestion, um, which I know that my colleagues here can, can back up, is to always reach out to someone in the admissions office. Um, typically, there's a counselor, an assistant director, associate director, someone who's willing to answer your questions, uh, kind of break through that, um, that knowledge uh, deficit that you might have in that area. And that's always my biggest advice. When in doubt, ask. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Next, Clarkson University. Uh, thank you very much. I would say uh, take advantage of your open houses, student visit days, um, because, you know, last year, many schools didn't have the, the, the option to have you on their campus to visit. Now, uh, many more things are open, tours are open, open houses are great. They want you there. They'll welcome you. And, and it's a great experience to put your foot in, on campus and, and check out where you're going to study, sleep and, and work very hard. So look for those opportunities. Great advice. Next, DePaul University. Yeah, so as, as important as this college process is, also remember this is the last you know, few months you're getting to spend with some people that you've spent a lot of time with. So enjoy your senior year. Really get to you know, hang out with friends that you might not be going to the same school with. And so really enjoy and take in the last few months before graduation. And lastly, the University of Delaware. Uh, my advice is to be yourself in this process. Usually one of the first questions we get is, what are you looking for? Um, and what we're looking for is you, uh, what you're going to bring to our campus. Um, some of us do have more niche things that we're trying to fill, but truly, if you are yourself, you will end up at a college that hopefully is the right match for you uh, and a place where you'll be really happy. Great. The next question. Let me pull it up here. What is one thing you want students to remember about your school? Um, we will start again with the University of Colorado. Thank you. Um, what I'd like students to remember about our school is that uh, we st uh, strive to uh, strike that balance for students. We are a larger university, but we also try to create that sense of community uh, within our campus. And like I mentioned during my brief presentation, um, I think the city of Boulder is a really wonderful place to be, one of the safest cities in America. Um, so my thing to always remember about CU Boulder is that you get the benefit of, of a large institution with also the support that typically accompanies smaller institutions. Great. Clarkson University. Uh, hello. I'd like to remember that Clarkson University has a very successful career fair. We have it every semester. Uh, it's 240 plus employers come to our campus. They talk to the students. Uh, they're trying to recruit our science, business, engineers. Uh, many times sophomores and, and even freshmen might be around there talking to companies already about internships and co-ops. So not, all, not always jobs, um, but you have a chance every semester to talk to companies right away. Great. Uh, next, DePaul University. So this is completely pandering to you all as New Yorkers, but I will like to remind everyone that DePaul will give you a free Metro card. So you never have to worry about paying to get around the city of Chicago. You have that U pass to get you anywhere you wanna be within the city. So specific to you as New Yorkers, but just to remember that. Great, and lastly again, University of Delaware. 
I'll go with a fun fact. Uh, the University of Delaware is one of only five institutions in the country that have both a Super Bowl winning quarterback and a US president as alumni. Oh, that is a fun fact I didn't did not put together. <laughs> All right, and then one more question. Um, kind of switching gears here, but what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? And again, we will start with the University of Colorado. Uh, so this is specifically for our process. You know, what other, other universities do is, is uh, you know, within their own hands. But a, a question that we get asked frequently is like, is test optional really like a thing? Like in the end, will you still, um, will you end up being hurt for not submitting your test scores or if your scores are not low enough? Um, what I say to that specifically, um, especially now that we've gone through one year of like a pandemic application cycle is that we found about 50% of our students applied without test scores and admission rates generally stay the same. So it, for us at CU Boulder specifically, it's entirely up to the student, but that is something that I'd like to debunk specifically. Like it, it, test scores are important, but not as important as they used to be in the review process. Great. Clarkson University? I think a myth that some um, students have come up is that, that you don't want to bother your admissions office. You know, you don't want to, as soon as you apply, just let them reach out back to you, like email them. Let If you know your admission counselor of your area, just email them and say, hey, I applied. I'm very excited. Thank you very much. Or just call the office and, and just, um, you know, we want to hear from you. So that's pretty much what I'm trying to say. So thank you. <laughs> Great. Uh, DePaul University. So I think there's this myth that you're, or this belief that students aren't going to get in anywhere because the news always covers those highly selective institutions. You will get in somewhere. There are, is a university for you. Um, it might not have been your dream school. You might not get into that, but there will be a place that you find that you'll be happy and you'll learn and you'll make friends. It just might not seem like that at the time, but there's a place for you. All right, and to wrap us up, the University of Delaware. So I'm, I'm having trouble not repeating what Amanda just said, <laughs> but essentially that you are in control of this process more than you think you are. You are the one that chooses where you will end. And that is what we're aiming for, right? So we, we have this middle ground where we decide who to admit, um, but we are not highly... Um, you know, dismissing a lot of students. We do read applications, all of us do. Um, we love meeting students. We are here to help you land in the place that is the best spot for you. Uh, and you are the one that chooses that school. So you have more control than you think. Uh, and we really are here to help you with that process. So utilize us uh, as needed. Great, all great pieces of advice and, and good debunks there. Um, but that's all we have. Those are all our presenters. So I want to thank you to everyone for joining us, our presenters for taking the time out of your busy schedules, um, and our attendees for joining us to hear a little bit more about some great universities that we had today. Um, attendees, as you close out of this window, a very quick five question survey will appear on your screen. That is how we make improvements to our events. So if you wouldn't mind uh, filling that out, we'd greatly appreciate it. A reminder, there are two more hours of programming tonight, so you can definitely sign up for more sessions. And recordings of all sessions, including this one, will be available in a few days at strivescan.com slash SFP. Thank you again to everyone for joining us and enjoy the rest of your night.